we have another piece of the IE8 dev tools that you can actually use, and that is the JavaScript profiler. And performance is, first of all, a very big part of what we do in IE. Uh, we did a lot of work to make sure that um, people's main websites actually functioned very performantly. But also we wanted to make sure that dev tools enable developers to, uh, to write websites that were quite performant in IE. So uh, we have this profiler, and what it does is it allows you to see things like um, where an application is spending its time. So I can look at both a, uh, a function or a call tree view and see, okay, I have one function here that's actually calling into another function, or just a straight, here's the function list, how many times that code path is being hit, um, how much time I'm spending in that code path, and then you can optimize accordingly, which is pretty cool. Um, what's also nice is that we can export the data from that, uh, and it's formatted very nicely for working with Excel and other tools, um, such that you can run whatever automation you want against it, and really make sure that your websites are performing um, to the best degree that they possibly can. So, um, the one thing, the one catch about this is, um, is um, the fact that we have not had the chance to hook it up to our new script engine yet. So if you went to the keynote yesterday, you saw our uh, GM, Dean Hakamovich, talk about the Chakra scripting engine. And this is pretty cool. Um, we hooked this up, or rather, we wrote this from the bottom up, and um, a completely new scripting engine. The only problem is that uh, to debug performance, you have to hook it at a pretty low level. So we actually have not had the time to uh, hook this into the uh, platform preview build yet. Um, but that will be coming probably in platform preview build two. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. And you can definitely go to uh, IE8 today and check out the uh, profiler. So now I'm going to actually show that off. Um, going into IE8, um, I just have, I'll, I'll be uh, honest here. This uh, test is a little bit contrived. All it does is it sort of has um, like four code paths, um, well, eight code paths, four like sort of tasks, and they're duplicated. And the idea is we have very different ways of doing the same thing, and then you can sort of compare side by side each method and see um, how exactly it compares performance-wise. So I'm going to go over here into the profiler and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so I can sort here by the function name. Um, for example, this method right here, work on local variable. The only difference between the two incarnations of this method um, is that one of them sort of uh, edits the inner HTML of the element as it goes, so I have like four calls in there, versus one that just sort of caches the results and then um, sets it all at once at the end. And even though it seems pretty simple, what's kind of cool about that is in any case where you can't just look at the algorithm behind a method and see, okay, this one's going to be more performant than this one because it's O of N rather than O of N squared, um, browsers do matter, right? Some APIs are just more performant than others. And you can see, okay, because I called inner HTML here, it's actually much, much faster than just building up the tree arbitrarily underneath whatever element that I'm operating on, right? Um, so what's cool about the profiler is I can compare two elements side by side. I have work on local variable two and work on local variable. Um, now I hit them both the same amount of times just for a, a fair comparison. And you can see um, how much time is spent in both and then say, oh, wow, this code path looks better than the other one. You know? So it kind of gives you that degree of control such that you can go in and actually fine tune your performance in your application to, uh, to suit whatever needs you, you actually have. And there's also sort of a discovery aspect to this as well. Going into um, any sort of web application where performance is becoming more and more important every day, um, you can go in and just see exactly where your application is spending its time. So if I want to sort by um, inclusive time, uh, which includes the children of a function or functions called from the parent, um, I can say, oh my goodness, I am spending so much time in this method at the top or something like that and actually make sure that you optimize for the cases that matter for your users. Um, so pretty cool stuff. I mean, to be honest, this is something that I really didn't know about until I started writing the presentation. So don't be ashamed if you hadn't heard about it until now. But um, this is cool stuff and definitely things that can make your, uh, your applications faster for real users out there. So having talked about um, IE8, 
now I want to talk about A9. Um, we've made some improvements to the dev tools. And uh, I think we had a great start in IE8. And we listened to customers and made sure that we targeted some improvements to make the lives of developers just that much easier in IE. Um, but first I want to point out some things here. Uh, we have all sorts of new stuff in IE that you've heard about over the course of yesterday, hopefully some of the sessions today, stuff like that. And among them are all sorts of new elements and CSS styles and stuff like that. So if I have like an SVG image, I can inspect that with the same power and privilege that I have with a div element in HTML. Right? The dev tools work exactly the same between element types. Um, we've also made sure that our accuracy, while it was good in IE8, um, is even better in IE9. We pull our CSS directly from Trident now, the layout engine, and make sure that any result you see in the dev tools is actually reflective of what you will find on screen, um, which is very, very nice in certain situations. And then lastly, we realized that developers are humans too, um, which may be a surprise to some of you, but we added a couple of features like word wrap and go to line and stuff like that that um, hopefully will make it that much more fun to actually work in the dev tools in IE. Uh, we realize performance is kind of a big deal too. Um, and we optimized for certain cases that we felt would be important for developers. So I don't know about you guys, I read the HTML5 spec pretty much every day. And uh, one of the things that you'll notice if you do that is if you go into dev tools, it's actually responsive in like, less than five seconds. I can go in and view the source of HTML5 spec, um, anything I want really, and like the dev tools just sort of scale and react the way you would expect and want them to. I, um, I can go into large JavaScript files, like jQuery, which uh, if I recall is something like 5,500 lines of code, at least in the, the minimized version. Um, and I can go in there and like I have a very nice scalable experience with a debugger. Um, and one of the things that was sort of a pet peeve of mine a little bit um, was the fact that I could, I could navigate around and then my, my experience would slow down a little bit if I kept the dev tools open. So we also did some work to, uh, to make sure that the dev tools would not slow down the actual experience of using the browser while you're debugging a, a given website, which is pretty cool stuff as well. So I'm going to show off an HTML5 t-shirt designer. And I'm of the firm belief that anything that has the words HTML5 in the title is automatically like cool and awesome. So um, it's basically the same demo as before, except HTML5 in the title. And I'm going to inspect some, uh, some of the new elements and markup that we have and just show you exactly how that works. Um, so here's the platform preview build. And I'm going to bug you about this again, but you can go and download this right now. Um, and what I'm going to do is show you a real life scenario that I ran into. Um, I wrote this little t-shirt by hand in here, right? And um, what's cool about this is um, 